everyone. Um, today I am going to do a bookshelf tour and then also a book on haul part. It's kind of part one. I have decided that I've got to cull down my book collection so I wanted to do a bookshelf tour before it got too sparse. So this shelf is a bit, is a small long shelf of these are my prettiest books. This is where my pretty books go because it's directly across from my couch and I'm looking at them all the time. So I, I tend to make things kind of pretty in here. Um, these first ones here are my McSweeney's. Uh, I really, I, I really have a soft spot for McSweeney's, uh, you know, like pretty publishing kind of little games that they do, things like that. Like this one's pretty interesting. Um, it's got like this like fold out and like, my copy's not in the greatest shape, but I just, I love that about McSweeney's. So I have a little tiny McSweeney's collection and it goes into Klosterman and, and Barnes. All my Doris Lessing is down here. I have a lot. I don't think they're double, no, it's not double deep anymore because I got rid of some in my own haul. I got a lot of oats here because she's easy to find. You can see behind there, I've got my like secret stash of Harry Potter. <laughs> kind of hiding back there being like, I'm not gonna put out that I'm that much of a fan, but they're hidden back there. Collected stories of Colette right there. I have my, I don't really, this has kind of been shoved here since the unhaul. We haven't really found a spot for my Lisa Moore and my Lena Dunham, but they're, uh, they're photography books here. I'm gonna just put that in the right spot. I am a photographer, so I have quite a collection. Um, this is not even all of it. I have downstairs in my office, I have like a whole other shelf like this that's like a row of them. But I've got my Annie Leibovitz, which then leads to Susan Sontag because they were partners. So I thought they need to be kind of together. And then on a related note, we've got John Berger because he wrote a lot about photography. So I, I kept him in there. Along here, I have my Daphne du Maurier, like the James Joyce and Milan Kundo is kind of shoved in there. Um, I love, this is one of my favorite of my book co covers that I own. I really love it. It's just so pretty. I got it at a church book sale for like $3 or something. I love it. And then I got my Toni Morrison collection and some of my four. I actually have a whole other box of books that's missing. Um, I think I found them, but they might as well stay in a box now. I have more for, but he, he's got lost in that box. Then I have some some more stuff back here. Nothing too interesting, just some Lawrence Durrell, some Carol Shields. I got the Zadie Smith I haven't read yet. Um, some Steve Martin, Borgé. I got, got some collection there. He is one of my favorite writers. This is one of my favorite collections. Some Douglas Adams, because he's fun. Some Stephen Milhauser, because he's fun. This is kind of a bit of a fun shelf, once we get past here. Um, this is the oldest book I have. I've had this since I was a kid. It was like one of my favorite books when I was a kid. Same with my, my Calvin and Hobbes. That's kind of, that's from childhood. I'm not very sentimental, so I don't have much from childhood, but I have those two things. Then down here we have, it's not all poetry, because Paul Oster's thrown in there for some reason, but uh, we've got like some Susan Musgrave, some Edna St. Vincent Millay, some Sylvia Plath, and then I don't have a lot of I don't have a lot of poetry. I like poetry, but I like very specific poets, so I've got a few there. Um, I got a lot of Musgrave. Like she was someone that I couldn't find anything of for a long time. So anytime Matt was anywhere and he saw any, he collected, and now I have like a huge huge collection of her when I think really I only like her poetry. <laughs> I'm not sure yet. I haven't quite made my way through all of her stuff. Her poetry is absolutely beautiful. She's kind of like a lesser known Canadian poet. So I would suggest to the people who like CanCon out there, try some Susan Musgrave. She's not her fiction necessarily, but her poetry is quite amazing. So this shelf also isn't all books. Obviously I'm an old camera collector too. Um, so I have some of my working cameras as part of the shelf, and little bits and bobs, but, uh, so this is just more like to look nice. So these are my favorite 
older penguins. So I'm gonna probably spend a minute here. I just got this one. I haven't even taken the price tag off yet. Look at this great Christopher Isher Isherwood. I love it so much. It's so great. Then this really strange little copy of Orlando that like the spine and the cover don't really add like to have it look the same, not upside down. I have to flip it the opposite way. So it's like a real, I think I looked it up one day. It's really old, 1945, isn't it great? I love it so much. Um, and then I got the Selected Essays, and more George Orwell, and a bunch of Evelyn Waugh. Ugh, oh, I love it, I love these old penguins. These are like my favorite, because look at this great cover! It's, I love it. The next stack is my other kind of like, to look at books, and it's all these different like beautiful old, versions of, I mean, this Victor Hugo. I'll never read this, but it's so pretty. Um, look at this, it's so pretty. Thomas Hardy, the poems of Tennyson, some Byron, some Shelley. They're so nice and they have the nice pages and they just, they look like you wanna like go out a picnic and read them in like fancy hats. That's how I feel when I look at these books. So the next shelf, I feel like this has been like the shelf like along here dedicated to like some of my favorites because you can see, and I'm quite proud of it, I have almost everything by Janelle you know, Winterson. And I'm really, I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited about it. Like this one, this one's hard to find. Her essays, yeah, good. So this is all by Janelle you know, Winterson. And then I got some, some Joan Didion, who I also love. I also have these, <laughs> this really rugged, copy that I found in a cafe. So when we get to this, there's no rhyme or reason to these stacks, really. It's just kind of like, stuff gets thrown there. Um, like, you know, there's some some old penguins, there's some Vonnegut, there's some more Orwell, some more Margaret Atwood, uh, some more Lawrence Durrell, there's some Virginia Woolf, more Virginia Woolf, some James Joyce. And then we pull them out. We got more. Look, aren't they awesome? I don't even care about reading them. I just want them because I like them. These covers are silly, but kind of awesome. Look, look at that design. I want them for the design alone. We got some some Snoopy back here, a, a Mork and Mindy video novel. Then we've got some Cynthia Osnick, which I have another collection at the back here. Um, again, my shelves aren't organized. Um, then Carver, uh, then Jean Rice, who also is, this is, this is the shelf of my favorites. Um, if this shelf like burned or something, I'd be really upset. I don't know where that, if, why that's where my brain went, but it is. And I got The Hours, which is one of my favorite books. And Fahrenheit 451, which is one of my other favorite books. And a few more Bradbury's, but to be honest, even though he's one of my favorite writers, I've only read that and then one collection of his short stories and I've read nothing else. So, I, yeah, I'm, I'm bad for that. Then I got this whole collection of different things. Um, actually, Mary McCarthy, I really wanna read. This is one of my oldest books. Got this one as a teenager, probably about 15 years old. So that's pretty exciting. I don't know what's back here, so. I love this novel. If there's, I, this is my university copy. This is like good CanCon here. It's like Carver, but Canadian. I got some, some Woody Allen, a really old copy of Lolita, some more Bradbury. Yeah, there, that, that wasn't as much of a winner back there as, as the front. Oh, I'm going to review this because I feel like it's getting no play. I love this book. It's the, the introductions by Patti Smith. She's a French author. Why is Jane Austen thrown in there with some F. Scott, some Alice Munro, some more Alice Munro, some more Mark. I feel like Margaret Atwood is just everywhere. Like there's, I have so much of it that we can't even make a section for her. It's just like every time I pull something out, oh, there's some more Atwood. So this shelf, we got some Acker, which is great. Kind of like a, a 90s punk rock Burroughs-esque kind of. Got some selected stories of Edith Wharton, some more Edith Wharton. What's back here? I'll find out. Uh, some Beckett, a play, 
Patricia Highsmith. Yeah. It's more Beckett. This really ugly copy copy of Anne Marie McDonald. Oh, so this I got a lot of Anthony Powell. I had a lot of this because I went to like a library in Cottage Country and they had like a ton of it and it was like 25 cents or something. So I just I was curious and they were all there. Some more Daphne du Maurier. Some Jean Genet. I don't know what's back here. We're gonna find out. Some Austin that I'll never read. I'm trying, guys. I'm trying. The Art of Motorcycle. Zenness, or whatever it's fucking called. The Modern Woman's Guide to Sexual Maturity. I didn't even know I had that. I bet that's hilarious. I'm not putting these back right. That's fine. Um, we've got Thomas King, which, I mean, I'm sure everyone's read it now because it's made its rounds through booktube. But Emily Bronte, some Camo. Some more receipt, like why is Virginia Woolf here? I have a bunch of Virginia Woolf up there, but I also have some down here. Then we got a few more books in the back. White Noise, which is, I love that copy. Some essential Buddhism when I want to feel enlightened. So this is like my little kind of, it's supposed to be my to be read shelf and currently reading shelf, but I started running out of space on those shelves. So now other stuff has kind of spilled over, but this is my currently reading, so there's that. This is small right now, which is great. Um, this is like books that I'm considering discussing for booktube. This is my to be read so far for 2015. I have it kind of in like, one of my goals for 2015 for reading for myself, uh, which has nothing to do with booktube, but for like my artwork is to read more art criticism. So I have my art criticism kind of there, and then these are kind of the other stuff that I'm wanting to read. But who knows? It changes, so my to-be-read shelf is always changing. This is kind of like my fun reads when I'm like, after I've read something particularly challenging, I'll always grab one of his books. This shelf was just thrown like this today <laughs> when I when I decided to do the the bookshelf to work because I had nowhere to put them. Uh, this is just like anthologies. This is mouse because it's awesome. Uh, and other books that I'm interested in reading, and then some modern Canadian plays. That's this shelf's kind of a disaster. <laughs> um, so this is kind of, this is like my this shelf is always changing and evolving, and things are always moving on it and going off it. Like I might make this bottom shelf like a like considering getting rid of shelf. I don't know yet. It, it, it's, this shelf is kind of like the disposable shelf where I don't necessarily know ever what I'm doing with it, but that's that shelf. So that's it for my bookshelf tour. Uh, I, I got to admit that filming by myself is, is not my strong suit, but I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it actually now, but it will probably be released separately is, uh, is my unhaul so you can see how much I've already taken out and then how much I still have to do. Because so I basically, I want to get this down from the amount that I have now to about like 100 or maybe, maybe 75 or as little as I possibly can so I don't have to move a bunch of books. So, so this is the start. You'll see the end as I go.